Are you an adoptee, Mrs. Jones? No. Uh, maybe I've come to the wrong place. Are you looking for someone? Yes. Um, a baby. Uh, actually, she'd be a young woman now. I, um, I want to find my daughter. Before the laws changed, virtually all adoption records were sealed. When that's the case, you have to obtain a court order, which is rarely granted except in cases of extreme medical emergency. Oh. Well, then maybe this is pointless. Oh, not at all. When adoptees turn 18, if they wish to locate their birth parents, they can register with us. If your daughter knew she was adopted, and if she contacted us, She'll be in our files. Wouldn't I have heard from her in that case? Not all searches are successful. We wouldn't have passed along your name if you hadn't given us your consent. Similarly, when she would give us permission, you could have information on her only. I see. The emotional ramifications <sighs> can be overwhelming. Yeah. Well... This is the best I can do. I, uh, I was only 16 at the time. You gave birth at County Hospital in Fort Lauderdale. Yes. You've listed the birth father as unknown. Yes. That might be helpful. Do you, in fact, know who he was? The lawyer who set up the adoption? Uh, I don't remember his name. I'm not even sure I was ever told it, you know, because I only met him once. And then uh, after that, I just got a check in the mail every week, you know. He brought something to the hospital for me to sign. After. Is there anyone else who might know his name? Is that really important? It might be. Wow. Let's run this through our computer. How long will that take? I might have something for you in a couple of hours. Oh, great. Uh, there's a fee, isn't there? $35. We're a not-for-profit group, but uh, we have to pay the rent like everybody else. Um, I, I just want to know that my daughter is healthy and happy. And if she doesn't want me in her life, I will understand that, okay? That being realistic. But I must tell you, I've been party to some wonderful reunions. Paging Nurse Bobby Spencer. You're watching The Tribute to Jacqueline Zeman Marathon. Another episode is coming up next. Stay tuned for more. It makes his Visalia pitching debut a live report on Action News at 6. Listen, I figured why stand on ceremony when I have such wonderful news. Well, let's hear it. Oh, you may go, Reginald. 
Well? I did it. I raised the money to buy deception. Now we still have a deal, don't we? Dr. Gill, please call your service. Dr. Gill, please call your service. $20,000 in $100 bills. I've never had that much cash in my hands in my life. My vision's getting mugged. I'll see it gets where it's going. Safe and sound. Are you sure this will buy all of the information we need to find my daughter? Don't worry. I'll verify what this Fremont character is selling before I hand it over. Mrs. Jones. Oh, excuse me. Hi, Detective Garcia. Uh, is there something I can do for you? Thought you might have time to answer a few questions. Regarding? Anything you might happen to know about the murder of Damien Smith? Could you cover for me here for a minute? Sure, if you'd like. Thank you. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> this should be private enough. I uh, doubt it will take very long. No, probably not. So, why would you think I would know anything at all about Damien's death? <laughs> you know, I find myself in a very strange situation here, Mrs. Jones. I never encountered this particular sort of circumstance before. A homicide on top of an arson? It's not that unusual. No, I mean the kind of case where half the people in town had a motive to do in the victim, and most of them had the opportunity. <laughs> Whoa. Should I have a lawyer present for this? <laughs> I don't know. Do you think you need one? Justice Ward seems to be available. Hardly. What is it you want to know, Detective? Well, why don't I tell you what I do know, and maybe you can amplify it a little. These are transcripts of a televised interview you had a few weeks ago with Veronica Bowles and Damian Smith. We subpoenaed a copy of the tape from WLPC. Well, you know, there's nothing to hide in there. Half of Port Charles saw it, too. And everyone who did heard Damian accuse you of trying to kill him down in the catacombs. Yeah. But Damien accused a lot of people of a lot of things. But you didn't deny it. In fact, what you said was... Ah. My only regret is that I didn't succeed in killing you. Oh, come on, detective. There's literal and there's hypothetical. That's right. Hypothetical is what I'm dealing with now. And literal is Damien dead. And nobody's very sorry. It really is terribly sad, isn't it? Is it? Why don't you tell me about that incident a few months ago at your brother's club? I have an eyewitness who says you and Damien engaged in quite a shouting match. Did your eyewitness also tell you how he baited me? To the point where you lost control? No. I believe then, as I do now, that every single thing I said was appropriate to the situation. And I may as well save you time and energy when I tell you that he was verbally abusive to me again the next day, right here in the hospital. And I can produce my own eyewitnesses, if you like. That won't be necessary. Now, getting back to that incident in the catacombs in which Damien incurred a serious back injury. I wasn't there at the time. You didn't try to lure him down there? I wasn't present when he was injured. And if Damien felt that I was really responsible, why didn't he press charges at the time? You and Smith were lovers at one point, right? Briefly. When my husband and I were separated, yes, but that's no secret. Damien reminded everybody in that interview. Did that make you angry? No. No, as a matter of fact, most people knew about it anyway. And if you read that carefully, you will know that I wiped the floor with him. Right. 
Okay, detective. Brass tacks. I loathe Damien Smith. I won't deny that. You also haven't denied trying to kill him down in the catacombs, either. But, as they say, that's pure conjecture, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Now, here's some more. Suppose... Let's just suppose you tried and failed to kill him back then. Maybe this time you tried again and did a better job. They did last night. Must be the restorative powers of Chinese food. Um, well, I don't think it was the Chinese food as much as I did enjoy it. No? Mm mm. I think it's all this attention. I'm not used to it. The face of deception isn't used to attention? Not this kind. I mean, a friend sending me flowers from the four corners of the earth and flying in Chinese food from Madrid. Better watch out. It's enough to make a girl smile. Is it? Well, at least forget about her internal injuries. Well, that's exactly what I had in mind. <clears throat> so, uh, did you need to uh, take a nap? I just... I just woke up. <laughs> Yeah, but you started rather earlier with your visitors. Listen, if I didn't want you here, I'd throw you out. No, I meant Sonny. Sonny was here? Yeah, I assume you'd seen him. I was sleeping. Sonny was here while I was sleeping? So, are you ready to be sprung, huh? The nurse told me it'll probably be tomorrow. Um, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I am. My head's ready. I don't know about the rest of me. I still kind of hurt a lot. You know, I guess they figure I can do that on my own without them. <laughs> yeah, I believe that's called managed care. Hmm. <sighs> well, if you like, I'll order you a battery of nurses around the clock. Please. In any case, I'll have a car and a driver pick us up here and uh, see us safely home to Kelly's. Are you going to get a van for my flowers? Good as done. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I can't take all these home. I think I should have them distributed through the hospital, you know? There's a bouquet here for probably every patient they have. Yeah. It's very sweet of you. Well, you're very sweet. Way above and beyond our deal. Well, I never enter a deal that doesn't give as good as it gets. Well, just think. The love of my life is mine again. Well, professionally speaking, of course. Otherwise, it would be Kevin, but he's been mine all along. So, well, anyway, I've been doing a lot of thinking. And I really think the short amount of time that I was a quarter main, I learned a lot of good things. Uh, so it seems. And one of them I definitely learned from you is the advantages of keeping your business in the family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now, deception is going to be in my family. And it's not in yours. And I get what I want, you get what you want, and everybody's happy. Don't just, oh, unless, oh my gosh, you haven't sold it to anybody else, have you? Oh, certainly not. <sighs> I must say I am impressed with how swiftly you moved on this. Mm, well, I just made up my mind I was going to do it. And by gosh, I am. Whatever it takes. You know, I admire your tenacity <laughs> and your savvy. I do. You know, I know it must be difficult for you to part with your ELQ stock. But what better way than to use it to purchase your own heart's desire? Mm, well, you know, I haven't been able yet to mention the best part. I do not have to sell my shares of EOQ stock. Huh? Well, see, I figured out a way that I can buy deception outright. Plain old money. Now, just a darn minute. 
our agreement called for the sale of your ELQ stock to me. Hmm? You were to come up with the rest of the price in cash. True. But you know what I figured? Let's just make it simple. You know, we don't need those messy stock transfers. I'm just going to write you a little old ch Actually, it's going to be a great big old check. And zip, deception is my headache. It's no longer yours. Since when have you been able to cover a check big enough to buy an entire company? Since I acquired a business partner. See, there are some people out there that have a lot of faith in my ability to turn this company around. Must be that head-shrinking paramour of yours, hmm? No. Nope. He, he needs to have his own head examined. No, no, no. Absolutely not. Kevin has nothing to do with this. Then who the Dickens is behind you, then? I uh, really can't say. Why the hell not? Well, you see, I would. I mean, if it was up to me, I, I would tell you it doesn't matter to me at all. But see, actually, my partner wants to remain anonymous. And after all, who can blame him? I mean, it is his pocketbook, after all. Oh, no, now, see here, Lucy. If you think that I'm going to do business with a phantom, you... Pinch me. Go ahead, pinch me. Don't you tempt me. Please, I'm trying to prove a point. Pinch me. If you say so. <coughs> no! Oh, boy, oh, boy. Well, you see, I am a real flesh and blood woman, a businesswoman that you just called savvy. Oh. Well, you did. And this businesswoman, who's alive and well, is going to be the one that's in charge of making this deal. And I'm going to sign all the papers. So let's just draw them up and get this over with. I'm sorry, Lucy. A deal is a deal. That's right, and we had one. But the deal we had involved ELQ stock. Now, I'm afraid that just plain old money isn't going to cut it. I knew it. Knew what, Amy? Every couple of hours, somebody has another floral arrangement delivered to Brenda. Just once, I'd like to be able to inspire that kind of a cash outlay. You could try getting hit by a car, but I think that's a little extreme. Must be that gorgeous, filthy, rich guy that's been hanging around here. He must be crazy about her. <laughs> oh, thank you. Just set them wherever you can find room. More? You better be careful. Yeah. If you keep this up, I may have to take you for granted. Take advantage of me instead. That's something to look forward to. I am so glad you came by. I was feeling a little lonesome. Well, I guess that means uh, our boy's out, huh? Yeah, Sonny was gone when I woke up this morning. He seems very busy. Well, he, uh, he is these days, very. Remember how I told you that I thought he might be spending time around the hospital? Huh? Well, I went over there the other day, mainly to see how Brenda was doing. And they said he hadn't been there. Well, yeah, you know, he's got, uh, he's got a lot on his plate now. Yeah, but he's usually not too busy to talk to me. Well, you know, with a guy like Sonny, there's, there's always things he can't say much about. I know that, Harry. And when those things are business, I really don't mind. Yeah. But right now, I have a feeling it's more. I'm sorry. I'm sounding whiny, and I hate that. Oh, no, 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 no. No, L Lily, let me tell you something. The one thing I've seen in Sonny consistently is that he is a man of his word. I mean, loyalty is a very big thing with him. And he's lucky to have a friend as loyal as you. Ah, hey, you know, you give what you get. A Sonny made a commitment to you. He honors his commitments. That's just it, Harry. I don't want to be honored. I want to be loved. You're actually serious. I'm a suspect. That's insane. Why? I didn't kill Damien, Detective. I didn't need to. The man created a living hell for himself right here in Port Charles, and frankly, I enjoyed watching. It was pathetic. The more he tried to ingratiate himself in Port Charles, the more people seemed to despise him. And to tell you the truth, I think that's what sent him bonkers. Do you think he had a psychotic break? Well, I'm no shrink. 
But I'd say that faking death by a hunk of venison and then trying to frame his former girlfriend is a bit suspect, not to mention trying to burn down a building with children in it. Yeah, where were you when that was going on? Fire? And the murder we know now preceded it. I was home with my husband. I'd had kind of a hard day, and uh, Tony stopped, and he got some elaborate gourmet takeout, and so we ate. And after we finished eating, I was feeling a little tired, so I went upstairs to lie down for a bit. And I uh, fell asleep. I had a terrible nightmare. And when I woke up, I called for Tony. Hmm. About how long would you say you were lying down? Probably about an hour. Was your husband in the room with you? Well, no, but he came as soon as I called for him. So no one can positively place you in that room at the time that Damien was murdered? Are you actually suggesting I managed to whip out and kill Damien? Well, you had what we call a window of opportunity. Now, here's how I see it. You made an excuse to go lie down. Your husband may have even gone upstairs to check up on you. And there you were, supposedly, sound asleep. I was asleep. I don't think so. I think you waited till it was safe. Then you got up. You had your clothes on under the covers. And you tiptoed out of the house with the intention of finding Damien. Well, how did I know where to look? Maybe you were following his movements. Maybe you overheard the argument with Justice Ward in which Damien threatened Ward House. Detective, please. That's hmm? a bit of a stretch. Maybe you were lurking nearby and saw him leave his hotel room. Anyway, you followed him to Ward House, saw him go inside. You followed him in, watched in horror, realizing what he was intending to do, burn the place. You couldn't let that happen. He had it coming to him anyway. He made a fool of you in front of all of poor Charles. So you looked around, found something heavy made out of wood. You crept up behind him and hit him hard over the head. That's quite a scenario. And quite possible. <sighs> Look, I took a nap. I had a dream. I woke up, and my husband came when I called him. You don't mind if I don't take your word for it? You can believe what you like, Detective, but you can't prove what's not so. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have a lot of work to do. And I have a very important phone call to make. Certainly. I'll be in touch. Please call extension 5732. You should know that one of my main motivations in this offer was to reacquire that stock. Since that's no longer a part of the deal, you're no more attractive than any other prospective buyer. So you would actually sell it to somebody else? To the highest bidder. Well, that's me. Me and my partner. Oh, your ghost partner. Say, is it Damien Smith come back from the grave? It really smacks of his tactics. No, I have a very live, very reputable business partner who shall remain nameless, but who we will meet your price, <laughs> whatever it may be. Really? Really. Well, that casts a whole new light on the situation. <laughs> Good. Well, let's just get this over with, shall we? Far be it from a quarter main to ever pass up the top bid. <sighs> I knew you'd see the light, and you won't be sorry, because I am going to make deception soar. Of course, that might make you sorry after all. Well, whatever. You get what you want, I get what I want. Everybody's thrilled. Thank you, Edward. Thank you oh. very, very much. Thank you. Oh. And, listen, I've got to run, because I've got to tell my partner all the good news. Bye. Ta-ta. Ta-ta. Find out who's backing Lucy Coe. I'll say this, Lillian, it's no pull. 
Sonny cares for you a heck of a lot, which is smart, because you are the best thing that ever happened to him. I know that. Hello. Oh. Hey. Hey. Everything's okay? Yeah. Yeah, everything's huh? under control. Good, good. Um, hi. Hi. Sorry I cut out on you like that. I didn't. You look so beautiful, I didn't want to wake you. I'm glad you're back. Well, I guess uh, I'll take off now that your uh, lesser half is home. <laughs> Oh, uh, I think I'll stop by the hospital and see how Brenda's doing. Yeah, yeah, she'd like that. Yeah. All right. Lily, you take care. Whew! Boy. What's this about Brenda? Funny. Do you want out? And why you even say that. Sonny, listen to me. When we got married, I knew exactly where your heart was. And I knew my own. Right. We didn't pretend. Maybe there were things that weren't said, but we both knew. Mm -hmm. I knew about your old feelings. And I also believed you when you said that this was where you wanted to be. I hope so, because I meant every word I said. I know you did. Okay, then what's Then. The... But feelings can change. Oh. It's funny, because that's exactly what I was hoping for. But not this way. Sonny, I want you to know that if this incident, this accident, has stirred up old feelings. Please listen to me. I'm trying. And you want out. I can accept that. If you want to leave, and it means your happiness, I will let you go. Lily, why? Because I love you. And I know you. Hey, you know me better than anybody. As much as I can let anybody. We stood in front of a, a priest, in front of God. We made promises to each other. Even the church has a means of revoking those vows. Even they can understand what... Even they can understand that we aren't always true to ourselves. Sonny, I don't doubt for a minute that you would spend the rest of your life with me just because you promised to. But I don't want that. How could I want that if you want to be somewhere else? With someone else? Listen to me. Come here. I must have hurt you an awful lot for you to talk like this. I'm sorry. But this has been a tough time for all of us. And yeah, yeah, I, I, I've been worried about the accident, but I'm, I'm not covering up. Yes, I care about Brenda. But don't you, don't you, don't you think I know it could have been you? How do you think that makes me feel? Now, I want you to, I want you to stop acting like you made me do something I didn't want to do because I had a choice and I made it. I'm not sorry. I'm, I, I don't want to change anything. I used to think I understood what you wanted. But I'm not sure anymore. I am. I, w I, w I want what we promised each other. I want to family, I want a future, and everybody else can find whatever they want to find so they can be happy. Because, well, you know, we are, right? Why shouldn't they? Do you mean that? With all my heart. 
You know, you know what I'm gonna do to prove it to you? I want us to take a second honeymoon. Honey. <laughs> We've only been married a couple of months. Well, that's good, because then it's still snowing in Vermont, right? Remember how great it was with the white and everything clean and new outside the window, and we were all warm inside. I remember. What if the snow's melted? Well, that's even better. That means it's the start of spring. The grass is growing, the trees are getting greener, and it's starting to bloom. I say, let's go. But let's go somewhere different. You tell me. Uh, Canada. Canada. Uh, Canada, I've always wanted to go there. <laughs> well, Canada it is. I just, uh, gotta take care of some business, and then we'll go after that. the luckiest guy in the world. If you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go? I don't know. Just answer the question. Is this a game? <laughs> don't you know you mustn't answer a question with a question? Why not? Ah! All right, I'll play a game. Um, let's see, I'll go to Bangladesh or, or Marrakesh or uh, Tashkent. Shh, don't you love that noise? Just any, any place with shh in it is very appealing to me. Well, I suppose that's as good a criterion as any. Of course, we'll have to take into account your physical condition. Oh, but that's the beauty of an imaginary trip. All day, no pain. Who says anything about imaginary? Jax. I'm healing from internal injuries. <laughs> yeah? That will make it someplace restful. You can rest. I can train for the triathlon. Triathlon? Well, it's a lifeguard triathlon. You're a lifeguard, too? Yeah, I didn't mention it. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> well, there are a lot of things about me you don't know yet. Yeah, I grew up competing in Australia. I have a race in the U.S. every year, and I try to make it if I can. Hey, maybe next year you can train for it, too, and we'll enter the competition together. Hmm. I don't know if you want to compete against me. I always win. So do I. When it counts. So, as soon as they deem you fit to travel, we'll have ourselves some real quality R&R. &R. Together? In some faraway place? Yeah. You'll be safe with me. Oh, I will? Well, maybe not all that safe. <laughs> want to run into anyone else, you know? I'm sorry. No. No, that's what I came up here to say. I'm sorry. But when I came up here the other night to lay the truth out on everyone, the last thing I, I meant was to hurt you. I'm sure you didn't intend to hurt me or anyone else. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I guess I, I could have could have thought it through a little bit more, you know? I mean, you know, not been so precipitous. I just... I just wanted to help AJ. Do you know what I mean? I mean, he... Once I figured out this load that he was carrying, all the guilt, you know, about, about Jason and, and Ned... I mean, I, I understand, I guess, I guess, that... what Ned was trying to do, right? But I just... I can't agree with the whole idea of it, because... The truth is, is really important to me. I've always found your honesty 
a most endearing quality. Yeah, well, I thought Ned did too. I was hoping that you'd come looking for him to make things up. <laughs> Mrs. Q, I don't even know if that's possible. I mean, Ned seems to think that I never even belonged in this family in the first place. Lois, I'm sure you're aware that we often say things in anger that we don't really mean. Oh, yeah. Sure I am. A and I did. But sometimes we say things that we didn't even know we thought, and then all of a sudden they, they come out, and, and there's no way of getting them back. See, I knew Eddie first. Right? And he didn't seem that different to me. Well, I mean, I was only seeing the parts of him that he was allowing me to see. You know, he held out. Because he was afraid. You see, dear, Ned didn't grow up feeling as loved as you did. Yeah, I know, but because he didn't feel as loved, and because he didn't tell the truth, it blew up in his face, like, like it blew up this time. You know, and you can't, you can't control things like that. You can't control people like that. You can't play God with the truth. I suppose it helps to be so solidly in the right. I know I'm headstrong, Mrs. Q. And, um, I know I probably sound sort of holier than now. But how am I supposed to make things work when I feel so outside of things? How did you? Love made it work, dear. Love and acceptance. Yeah, but see, that's just the problem. I don't feel accepted anymore. And all of a sudden, Ned slammed the door in my face and, and, and I'm, you know, I'm looking through the glass. And what do you see, dear? My husband. But I can't reach him. And do you love the man you see? Totally. But I told him that I don't think love is enough anymore. Maybe not. It is the best of what we have. You're one smart lady, you know that? They say it runs in the family. I really love you a lot. Oh, I bet a bamboose. So, you know, I'll see you later. Mm -hmm. Did I hear Lois? Yes. Oh, I do so hope that she and Ned can solve their problems. Well, I've already told him that he'd be a damn fool to let her go. He certainly would. Well, I have to go and talk to Cook. Oh, all right. I'll see you later, my dear. Not like that. Yes? Oh, did you find out who Lucy's silent partner is? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, I saw you talking to Detective Garcia. Was that about Damien? Mm -hmm. Don't tell me you're the latest suspect. You don't seem very worried about it. Oh, my goodness, Amy, why would I be worried? I can't believe anyone could possibly think Bobby did this. Oh, no, I, of, co of course not. I just mean that, you know, I mean, you really were pretty vocal about hating him. Well, for that matter, everybody was, myself included. Except when he was making humongous contributions to the hospital. Oh, well, that was his one saving grace. Well, I didn't hate him. I just flirted with him. That couldn't be a motive, could it? I mean, what could I be guilty of? Unrequited lust? And then, of course, what else is new? <laughs> Would you excuse me? I uh, have to make a call. Oh, you've been on the phone a lot today, Bobby. Yeah, I've been trying to get hold of research at Johns Hopkins. Oh, about a patient. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Either that or she has a secret admirer, too. Oh, Amy. You know, I kind of wanted to keep things uh, confidential. Oh, no, 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 relax. I just came by to see how Brenda's doing. Oh, oh well, that's good. Uh, actually, it is good here because I'm, I'm getting a little nervous. What's up? Well, you know, I, uh, 
I got the 20,000, the guy you put me on to, and I gave it to the detective that I hired, but uh, he said he'd get back to me by last night, and I haven't heard anything. So I called him, and it was very strange because there was no answer. There's always been a machine there before. I see. Uh, want me to do some checking? I'd be so grateful. Hey, no problem. What's the name? Here's this card. Uh, listen, I don't uh, mean to... Uh, yeah, 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 I know. Keep it discreet. I'll, uh, I'll make some calls from the phone up there. Thanks. Hi there. How's my face? Huh? The face of deception? Oh, Brenda. She's doing very nicely. As a matter of fact, she's going home tomorrow. Oh! Isn't that glorious? You know, not a scratch on her. That's the really good thing about internal injuries. Oh, and I assume that our mutual friend Jax is with her? I believe so. Oh, good. Well, then, why don't you buzz the room and tell him that I am out here waiting for him? <laughs> Lucy, I'm not a receptionist. Okay, okay fine. Mm -hmm. in hospital oh because let's think of it as well we're kind of giving birth aren't we i'm sort of to a, a brand new entity you know pretty soon deception is going to be ours and then after that the merger <laughs> i always thought births followed mergers but never mind oh boy <laughs> so if you've actually managed to seal the deal with edward i must say i'm impressed oh. It's all done except for crossing the T's and dotting the I's, and I have to tell you, it wasn't easy. The old coot tried to pull out, did he? Well, he tried to back a sorta, but I talked him right back into it without ever divulging my generous and silent partner. Is that deception? Mm. <laughs> Cheers. How would you like to be the new owner of deception, hmm? Some people put a quick tracer on this private eye of yours. The news is not good. What? Well, it looks like the guy's flown the coop. His phone's been disconnected and there's no forwarding address. I hate to tell you this, but it looks like you've been conned. Oh, my God. Yeah. I'm afraid you can kiss off that 20 grand and whatever it was supposed to buy. Sorry, my client was only good for 500 right now. But I, uh, I know for a fact she's loaded. She's married to some hotshot doctor in Port Charles. She wears a rock the size of Gibraltar. This Bobby Jones gal, she's real anxious to find her daughter. Well, let's keep it that way. Sunday, ABC presents a holiday classic you won't want to miss. This Easter Sunday, Charlton Heston, Yule Brenner, and Edward G. Robinson had an all-star cast in The Ten Commandments on the ABC Sunday Night Movie. Broadcasting Company, ABC.